What's going on people, Mike Seatown here with another episode of Out of My Element where you guys get to pick the albums that I review. And the winner of the poll for this review is King Cruel, Man Alive. But before we get into the review, I want to let you know that this video is being sponsored by CyberGhost VPN. CyberGhost VPN is one of the better VPN providers on the market. If you're not familiar with VPNs, they're the best way to go if you want to keep all of your digital online activities private and secure. An added benefit is when you have a VPN, you get access to content that may be blocked in your region. And this includes content from streaming services like Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, and others. And the app's available on Windows, iOS, Android, Amazon Fire Stick, and more. And you can access the app from seven different devices, all from one subscription. And right now, CyberGhost VPN is offering some amazing deals. One month for $12.99 a month, six months for $7.99 a month, and 18 months for $2.75 a month. That's a year and a half for only $49.50. You can't beat that price, but you have to sign up using the link that's in the description section down there. And you also get a 45 day money back guarantee in the event that you don't like it. So you really have nothing to lose. That said, let's get into the review. So King Cruel is the stage name of Archie Marshall. He's from London and he's been putting out full length albums since 2013. And this is his fourth album and I'd heard the name King Cruel for a while but I never really checked out his music to be honest for some weird reason I thought he was a rapper and I think I'd heard a song maybe once or twice and it didn't suck me in enough to investigate the rest of his music so this is a first for me but uh yeah for Man Alive the album starts off with the song Cellular and immediately I really liked the drum break with the kind of computerized chirps that were going on in the background. It was almost like some early Depeche Mode worship or maybe something that uh, was a bit Kraftwerk-ish. And his vocal approach was really cool too. Almost mechanized but still really, really well done and the lyrics seemed to be about being haunted by a, a failed relationship. You know, everything he sees and encounters reminds him of his ex. And I feel like this is something that a lot of us can relate to. The way the next song, which I believe is pronounced Super Marsh, but I'm not sure, but uh, the way that song starts, it actually reminds me a lot of Coil, who's one of my favorite bands. But uh, the very abstract, ambient backdrop, the, the minimal drums, the, the almost creepy vocals that Marshall lays over it, it sounds brilliant. This sounds like it could be pulled right off of the Ape of Naples. It has such a creepy vibe to it and I like the way it progresses and seems to get more urgent with the instrumental and the way his vocals kind of follow that and he, he starts to almost scream over it. It sounds really, really good. On first listen, when it got to Stoned Again, I got really worried because I didn't like that song at all. I wasn't a fan of the instrumental, um, but it was mostly the vocal delivery that really threw me off and ruined the song. Um, it was almost wrapped to a degree and I just didn't like it at all when I first heard it. Him screaming didn't work for me either. The funny thing is, after a few listens of the album, it absolutely grew on me. It's not my favorite song on the album, but I no longer dislike it. In fact, I like it quite a bit now, uh, especially once the instrumental gets more frantic with the guitars and then the weird horns that come in. I think this song is fantastic. This is a testament as to why I personally like to sit with an album for a bit before I start to review it, because my opinions do change. Comet Face was a really noisy post-punk jam that I really enjoyed. Uh, the Dream was a beautifully airy and atmospheric track. And uh, I actually wouldn't have minded if that song was a bit longer and even a bit more fleshed out. But I understand that it was sort of this interlude type of thing. So that's not really a gripe. Alone Omen 3 is gorgeous. It has this twisted radio head type of feel to it um, in a good way. You know, the chords almost sound sour the way they're played here and and the steady drum beat works really well here with the guitars and his subdued voice I just really like how he did this how he took a sound the sour ass guitars that would normally sound really bad on another song and he made it sound really gorgeous on this one and I really love this lyric 
The ache and thunder in the storms of your mind, soak it in for the rain will pass in time. Nothing wrong in sinking low, you're the omen of paradise, you're the ghost they put aside. That's beautiful. And, and the way it transitions out of that particular part is really intriguing. It really pulls you in and it doesn't let you go. Theme for the cross. I love the ambient sound of this. The, the subtle horns, the weird piano. I think it's gorgeous. And I love the way he writes to this as well. Like these lyrics. From 50 foot, cigs blow smoke across the border to men that drowned holding their daughters and weren't allowed refuge from the horrors. The instruction was mutual borders. The last song, Please Complete Thee, is a perfect closer. The sporadic sounds going off in the background. He sounds like he's reading a love note to someone that he's missing who's not near him, but he wishes they were. Why aren't you near me? What stars are you under? If only I could hear from you right now. Did your mind ever clear me? Has your faith found a pastor? Or am I still in shapes in the clouds? There are a few moments on the album that don't really connect with me or don't really seem to go anywhere. Like the song Slinky, it just seems like it's a bit of a filler track because other songs on the album have the same sort of ideas and do the same sort of thing that this one does, only they do it much better. Uh, I feel the same way about the song Don't Let the Dragon Drag On. Um, I did also feel the same way about the song Underclass, but the kind of jazzy part at the end of the song absolutely saved it. Uh, where it sees Marshall kind of singing over this smooth and kind of sexy backdrop in this almost bohemian kind of way. But overall, I really enjoyed this album. I love the sad ambiance that permeates the music here. Uh, it's, it's an album where I don't have to read a lyric to determine that there are some, some, some deep emotional things happening in the narrative of the album. You know, I think it does a great job of sucking the listener into this world where Marshall is residing. The early post-punk kind of sounds mixed with the ambient passages and the jazzy sections create a really nice canvas for Marshall to dump his emotions onto and, and I think the fact that he played almost all of the instruments on this is, is really impressive. So yeah, this was a great album. In fact, since I listened to it, it's become one of my favorite things to come out this year and I really got to thank you guys for that. You know, this is what this series was created for. Not necessarily to ensure that I hear something that I like, you know, that's just a, a bonus, but it was created to push me to listen to things that I would not normally listen to and I know it's impossible for you guys to always know that, but throwing something like this at me as opposed to a troll album makes this way more fun for me. So thank you to my patron who suggested this album and thank you to the people who voted for it. There will be another one of these videos soon so there's no new poll in the description section down there. Um, it'll be in the next video so make sure you look for that. But if you want to be someone that can actually suggest albums to go onto the poll, make sure you become a patron. You can do that for as little as one dollar a month. But um, thank you guys for this one. Um, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you leave some comments down there. Let's talk about this album because I actually haven't gone back and listened to his past albums, so I'm going to get to that. But um, yeah, as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace out, boy!